literally morning. Today is my day off. What I really wanted to do is I actually wanted to give a worthy tape over to you. Um, I think one of the biggest subjects that I'd really like to discuss is uh, when I touched on yesterday, the great disconnect between eating meat and the fact that an animal died. Being that I really have an interest in psychology, it's like, how can that happen? How can you be disconnected so far? And I think a lot of it goes into our youth, um, what we were taught. And I'll be hitting on that point a little bit. Um, also, I will be talking a little bit more about how I'm doing on day five of the vegan challenge. Hope it's a good day and hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. So uh, here I am at Whole Foods. Um, yeah, it's the Mecca and I've pretty much made a, a vegan haul. I've got to kind of watch my money because it's lovingly known as Whole Paycheck. And microgreens. With the kale microgreens, greens are like very, very good for you. It's like a superfood. So, um, I definitely will be trying that. Just out of Whole Foods and right now we are eating lunch. Their little salad bar and hot food section that they have. I found quite a few options without meat or any kind of meat product and right there it is. Oh, I can't wait. We are gonna have a car lunch. I've got mushrooms. Brussels sprouts, spinach, and some butternut squash. Of course, I chose the smaller thing because, yes, Whole Foods can be pricey. But I'm going to enjoy it. And it will taste it. So last night, I did something that I was very proud of. So I duplicated the recipe, the quinoa salad recipe that I talked about that was so delicious the other day love it. It was very, very easy to fix. Just basically cooking the quinoa. I used red quinoa instead of white and we chopped up peppers into small squares, chopped up cucumbers into small squares, added a little bit of basil and plated the quinoa and put the vegetables right on top and then covered it with a balsamic vinaigrette dressing. It was very good, very satisfying. And I did that yesterday because I really needed a protein fix. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that. are crammed in. We see beautiful meats in the store, beautiful displays of dead body parts of animals, beautiful packaging actually to make us want to buy it. And milk tends to take on a serene look. Mother cow, baby cow. That's not the way it is. I did want to add that some of the most uh, staunch vegetarians that I've ever known in my life, vegetarians and vegans, um, they came from farmland. They know one person that I can remember, her father was in the chicken business and the egg business. And they were very quiet about their vegetarianism. However, they were most definitely vegetarian. You could not even convince them that meat was good. Other people I've known um, have worked in or around slaughterhouses and uh, they, they saw what they 
did not eat meat. So there is something with knowing and again with the disconnection if you know where it comes from it is not as appetizing. when you get down to it when you see that hamburger on the plate when you see the ribs on a plate it does not look it does not look at all an animal had maybe died for it it does not look at all like it's such a bad thing to be fair I do have to go into my vegetarianism before my veganism um, my vegetarianism was uh, pretty much lasted about six months and I started getting these feelings back then even though I said that I would eat meat. I wanted to um, stay as far away from meat as I possibly could and ate what I thought that I needed uh, for my health, maybe the protein that I needed or something else. I'm willing to try another way to get my proteins and all the things that come with meat. I think it can be done. People say that it can be done and I'm willing to give it a try. Again, with the disconnect, I did want to discuss the fact that if you were not born into a vegetarian society, you have ideas since you were a kid. One idea is that uh, the animals that are lower on the scale do not feel pain. Uh, this is not true, and I got my first glimpse of this when I saw my brother cut the head off a fish that then he was going to cook. Um, he did this while the fish was live and the fish definitely showed signs of being in pain. Not even gonna question it. it some people feel the same way about shrimp. They say you, the nervous system in lower animals is actually. Now I've never seen a cow or a pig get killed, it, at least not in person. I mean I have seen this on TV over the years. I would say pretty much uh, that animal is feeling pain and uh, with the uh, farming the way it is now, assembly line farming, let's call it, certain animals actually suffer before they even die. Um, it really is a bother to me. It used to be somebody would have a couple cows, they would milk the cows or they would raise hens and they would have eggs on a lower farming scale. But with the factory farms, uh, too many animals suffer and die. I won't get into it. Uh, this is probably going to be my lowest note, of, at least for a while. But I did want to bring this up because it is such a lie that uh, you are taught to believe as a consumer, as a kid. It is something that is ingrained in our society and it's something that needs to be rectified. Now I can honestly say that uh, I am, as a vegan, definitely getting a paradigm shift here. I started getting these feelings when I was doing the vegetarianism. Um, even though I was eating meat, I would uh, count the number of chickens that I saved per week or the number of cows that I saved per six months by not eating meat so um it all adds up now i do have to say when you go to the store and um you see all this pretty beautiful wrapped up meat uh with smiling animals on it that kills me right there because what are they smiling at um you know it just um basically there is a disconnection this is what you're seeing um you're thinking of the farmland some of the farms here are a little bit different in that there is free range there is natural and then i think we've covered up a lot of that here however um i'm sure that there are slaughterhouses out here um where they are i don't know i know uh north of here there is a lot of uh chicken uh industrial raised chicken no names but uh, basically they will sell farmers the equipment to uh, buy chickens feed chickens and raise them 
Um, that in itself is cruel. It's cruel to the animal. It's also not so good um, actually for the farmers themselves. I hear stories and uh, some of the stories that I hear is if they go against the uh, parent company, then the parent company will send them a poison food and that'll pretty much wipe out their whole flock. Now, um, you're talking about somebody that wants to make an economy out of um, chicken farming, but the thing is, is um, you also have to consider the human element that like, these companies are also uh, being very bad to the people that are franchising too. I don't like that either because everybody does want to make a living um, and that is just, it's wrong.